in this session. Yeah, welcome everyone to the Tom class. Uh, as you know, uh, in the last class we have started the topic uh, governor. We have studied flywheels and then we started governors. Um, <coughs> we also understood uh, the main differences uh, in the flywheel versus governor. Okay, um, uh, we know that flywheel will help us to. Uh, both of them basically help us to regulate the speed of the engine um, but the flywheel is for the cyclic um, you can say um, up and downs okay or um, uh, during each cycle uh, there is change in the energy required um, and uh, that is compensated by flywheel whereas governor regulates the speed for different load applications okay not just for um, uh, not for the east cycle but for the load applications uh, like depending on let's say a load is increased on the system then what will happen is um, uh, system will run at a lower speed and then uh, when the load is less system will run at a higher speed but in order to regulate the speed or make uh, keep it in a constant range uh, we use governor okay so we understood that flywheel is used for fluctuation is used for cyclic fluctuation and um, governor is essential whenever uh, the different loading uh, load applications are there okay so both of them have different purposes and uh, we also understood different types of governors like centrifugal governor and inertia governor i have given a introduction about it um, and we have learned uh, different types of um, centrifugal governors okay so uh, we started with a governor and porter governor prol governor hartnell governor and uh, so on in the today's class uh, we will continue uh, we'll study another type of governor that is inertia governor and some of the concepts related to the um, some of uh, the basic concept related to the governors that will study and complete this topic and then we we'll move towards the new topic which is cams okay so you for your syllabus uh, we have uh, the major topics we already covered like um, till you can expect um, uh, more questions on uh, uh, mechanisms and machines then uh, velocity and acceleration analysis uh, gear and gear trains and flywheels okay and um, <clears throat> yeah these are the main topics apart from that like governors camps followers and uh, um, the uh, balancing these are a bit smaller topics um, and if you see the previous questions you will find very less questions of this because these topics are uh, added to the syllabus later on initially these were not um, uh, part of the syllabus uh, later on they have added uh, these topics okay so in today's session um, our focus first will be on um, governors and then we'll start camps so we'll try to cover as much as possible okay um, This, uh, okay, I think, um, yeah, with this introduction, uh, let's start uh, understanding this inertia governors first. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned before, if you remember the definition, let me check if I have given the definition before. Um, um, No, I think uh, I have not given you the definition of the inertia governor, but maybe just explained orally. So if, um, we can just write down a few words about it and then proceed. Okay. Um, so basically here, um, if you remember till this uh, point, we have studied that we were mainly using centrifugal force. In, in case of centrifugal uh, governors, our main controlling 
force was centrifugal force okay but in case of inertia governor name itself indicate that uh, inertia force like that is equal to mass into the um, angular acceleration or a deceleration um, which is given to the spindle is also used in addition to the centrifugal forces of the ball okay so in this type the positions of the ball you can say are affected by not only the centrifugal force but also uh, by the angular acceleration or the deceleration which is given to the spindle okay so we can say um, the force forces are coming by coming from not only just uh, the centrifugal force plus angular acceleration and deceleration deceleration okay <clears throat> acceleration means increase in the velocity okay with respect to time and deceleration means decrease in the velocity so let's try to understand this point what is meant by uh, how these two forces are uh, actually setting up okay so you might have studied in mechanics um, inertia force mass into acceleration right so same thing is there uh, in, a, in maybe in dl lambert's principle you might have studied that uh, in order to have equilibrium you, we used to assume a, um, inertia force in the opposite direction of the motion because it's an inertia force okay which will try to um, let's say oppose the motion okay so so as described earlier i can say that uh, an inertia governor is based on the principle of inertia of matter and uh, is operated by this angular acceleration or the deceleration in addition to the centrifugal forces so let's understand through this figure number a okay let's focus on figure number a here you can clearly see uh, let's say we this is suppose a g is a uh, um a mass okay we are keeping a mass at point g which is offset from o okay so from the center at certain distance r i am putting a mass g let me just use a laser pointer here so here at this point um you can clearly see that um we have used um a mass g okay um, a mass m okay at the point g we are keeping a small mass m and uh, this mass m is fixed on a let's say um arm og arm qg sorry so q qg is an arm and uh, g is let's say uh, is one end on which we are putting this mass okay so this is the overall setup okay let me just share my screen again i think it got ended yeah just just a minute um i'll share again I think it should work now. Um, I have changed my network settings, so I think it, there was some issue. Should be resolved now. Okay, so going back. Um, coming back to the setup of this inertia governor, uh, as I'm explaining that um, we have a mass m, um, which is at a g, we can say. Uh, center which is fixed on arm Q, qg and uh, it is pivoted on a rotating disc 
on engine shaft so let's say engine shaft is there which is um, with the origin o and uh, we have kept one disc on this engine shaft and on that we have fixed this arm qg okay um, the points qg and center of rotation o are not collinear we can clearly see they are at a different places so if this disc which is which we have mounted on the shaft is rotating with omega with with a uh, omega radian per second then what will happen obviously because of this uh, distance r and mass m mr omega square will be the force in the outward direction okay so this is our centrifugal force the, <clears throat> so this is one one force i hope you understood till this if body is moving in clockwise direction uh, in order to keep it in dynamic equilibrium as you mentioned before um, uh, what how the inertia force will look like inertia force will be in the opposite direction okay so inertia force will be in upward direction i would say correct um, because uh, the direction of the velocity will be in this in this direction okay um, or perpendicular to this length in in this axis and um, as it is inertia force it will be acting in the opposite direction so that's why m into acceleration acceleration means change in velocity with respect to time m dv by dt is acting in the opposite direction so this is how these two forces are there um and which are which is causing um the um the uh, actual act controlling uh, action here okay so basically um yeah so this qg shaft i'll just rub this figure to make you more familiar so this qg is the um you can say arm okay and this is connected to the fuel supply this is qg is connected to the fuel supply okay so whenever this arm is moving relative to the uh, center of the disc you will get different values of the centrifugal force and different value of the uh, inertia force okay so the combined effect of that uh, will affect the fuel supply okay so this is um, previously what we have studied is mainly the centrifugal force was causing the fuel supply uh, but, or the changing the fuel supply but in this case uh, both of them plays an important role in deciding the fuel supply okay yeah so r is the uh, you can say here r is this uh, radial distance of the mass from the center of rotation omega is the angular velocity of the disc and v is the tangential velocity of that mass which is kept at g and uh, if i calculate the moments about let's say point q okay as this arm qg is connected to the uh, fuel sub was uh, hearing a echo um, so i have disconnected and joined again let's hope um, it will work now properly okay um so yeah um 
Okay, so what I was explaining is this uh, QG is the arm. We are connecting this arm to the um, unit um, uh, or the fuel supply unit, and uh, accordingly we are controlling the uh, fuel supply. Okay, so now uh, then we should calculate the moments uh, about point Q. So if you calculate the moment about point Q, what values you'll get? At Q, moment coming from this MR omega square force, that is centrifugal force, will be MR omega square into um, X. Okay, into X and uh, M dV by dt into Y. Okay, this is um, this is coming from the centrifugal force. And uh, this is coming from the um, inertia force. Okay, uh, so we are considering two moments here. One is from the centrifugal force, other is from the inertia force. And uh, <coughs> uh, depending on it, we are um, um, controlling the action. Okay, so that's why uh, this governor action is comparatively rapid. So, but problem with this is if if I uh, use this setup for opposite omega, okay, opposite direction omega. So omega, if it omega is in opposite direction, what will happen? MR omega square will be in the same direction, right? I'm referring figure number B here. Here, the only difference is we are now uh, rotating this disk in the counterclockwise direction. Previously, it was in clockwise direction. So, if omega is in counterclockwise direction, our uh, MR omega square will not change. It is same because it will always act away from the center and uh, <clears throat> the value is of MR omega square. So, omega we are not changing, we are just changing the direction of omega. <clears throat> but now, as we are moving in counterclockwise direction, our inertia force will be in downward direction here, like, like this. Okay. Um, and that's why if you take a moment about Q now, one moment will be counterclockwise and another moment will be clockwise. Counterclockwise and this will be clockwise. So in this case, basically they may cancel out each other. Okay. So this arrangement may not be suitable if you change the direction of omega. Okay, so this is fine if your um, omega is clockwise and you are using this setup. Uh, but if you change the omega direction to the counterclockwise, the same setup will not work. Okay, because um, uh, the two moments uh, which are coming from centrifugal force and inertia force um, will let's say it's are in opposite direction and uh, makes the governor action sluggish okay so this we should avoid and in order to compensate that like what we can do is uh, we can also use the setup shown in the figure number c okay where we have arm which is uh, pivoted at midpoint and then we have two masses uh, two ball masses at the ends okay and uh, in this case, irrespective of whether we are rotating in clockwise direction or counterclockwise direction, uh, we will always end up with the inertia force and uh, centrifugal force values and uh, uh, we, we can make our um, governor uh, with a rapid action. Okay, so yes, yeah. So this is the main drawback. Uh, if you use uh, the setup in the figure number A and uh, the only thing is you can use it only in the clockwise direction, not in counterclockwise direction. Its effect will decrease, as you mentioned, Sean, uh, in the chat. Whereas uh, uh, it can be avoided by um, the using the setup, which is shown in the figure C. OK. Um, any doubt till this? Can I proceed to the next slide?
okay um another point uh, which you should know from this topic is um, sensitive uh, sensitivity of the governor uh, some of the definitions which are very important like sensitiveness hunting um, stability and uh, stability of the governors okay so these are some definitions uh, we have let's try to um, understand them screen is not visible okay um, yeah um, write down heading sensitiveness of the governor okay sensitiveness of governor <clears throat> can you tell me when you will say governor is sensitive in general what's your opinion on it like under which cases uh, we'll say this governor is sens sensitive yeah for small small change more deflection so basically um, it should respond for the smaller change in the speed okay um, or response of a governor to the small change to a small change of speed it means even if we have a small change in the speed a governor is responding then we will say that it is a uh, sensitive governor okay or in other words you um, if you uh, let's say focus on the govern centrifugal governors which we have used uh, depending on the moment of the sleeve for the fractional change of the sp speed is a measure of sensitivity okay the moment the moment of sleeve for a fractional change of change of speed is the measure of sensitivity is the measure of sensitivity <clears throat> okay Just give me a minute. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so we all know that our governor is running uh, in, let's say, full load application condition and uh, no load application condition. OK. Um, within this range, um, like our system is working and governor should be capable of handling it okay so i would say n1 is let's say the maximum speed which will get corresponding to the full load application uh, sorry minimum speed uh, corresponding to the full load application why because as we increase the load speed will reduce and uh, no load condition as we reduce the load speed will increase that's why we are saying it as a maximum speed co corresponding to the no load condition okay and n is the mean speed in this case then the sensitiveness is mathematically can be written as range of the speed divided by mean of speed what is the range of the speed n2 minus n1 okay this is the range of the speed and mean of speed is n n is nothing but the sum of the maximum speed divided by uh, sum of the maximum speed and minimum speed divided by 2 okay so write down this formula sensitiveness of the the governor is mathematically calculated by using this formula. Um, not sure why it's happening today. My screen is. Um, 
my screen share is getting ended in between um yeah write down the formula sensitiveness is equal to range of the speed divided by mean of speed okay so this is one of the definition um, another definition which is important is hunting okay uh, let's try to understand this concept of hunting Uh, sensitiveness is whether it's a good quality or bad quality according to you like uh, it's a good quality or a bad quality of a governor it's a good quality right so uh, but if a governor is too much sensitive for example let's say um, uh, let's say if let's say any there is a chance like if it is too much sensitive there is a chance that it will end up with just fluctuating not it will not stabilize itself it will just end up in fluctuating from uh, let's say um high, higher slew position to the lower slew position okay why because for example um let's say we, we, we are removing some load on the engine okay so we have engine load we are falling load we are reducing so what will happen uh, if the governor is uh, too much sensitive position slew position will go up as it is too much sensitive what will happen it will just reach the top position so slew position let's say it slew will ro move this is how the slew will go up uh, let me just show how the slew is slew is like this and it has to oscillate in between two position for example okay this is a maximum position this is a minimum position the the sleeve is going to the topmost position okay because it's too much sensitive and because of this what will happen it will shut down the fuel supply fuel supply will shut down then what will happen fuel supply shut down speed will reduce sudden fall in the speed you can see speed will also fall okay so in order to avoid the speed fall what will happen sleeve will again move rapidly to the minimum point so what will happen so as to let's say compensate this sleeve will come down to the, this minimum position this was a maximum position and it will now come to the minimum position as it is too sensitive it will come fast to the minimum position and then uh because of that what will happen fuel supply will fully open fuel supply will fully open and then because of this speed will fully increase so ultimately what this governor is doing it is repeating the same cycle just hunting from the maximum to the minimum sleeve positions because it's too sensitive okay sensitiveness of the governor is a desirable quality but if governor is too sensitive it will end up with fluctuating co continuously and the phenomenon is known as hunting okay are you getting this point <coughs> so i would say here you should write down this this will occur uh, um if governor is write down if governor is too sensitive it may fluctuate continuously okay and this phenomenon is called as hunting what is isochronism um or maybe i'll come to this point later uh, it will it will need some explanation before that what is stability of the governor stability of the governor is when we say a governor is stable if it brings the um speed of the engine to the required value okay so write down if it brings when a governor is said to be stable if it brings 
the speed of the engine. To the required value. And there is not much hunting. There is not much hunting. Okay. Then we call it as a stable governor. Okay. This is the definition of a stable governor. <clears throat> so basically, you can. Uh, Stability or let's say a sensitivity are the two basically opposite characteristics of the stability versus sensitivity. So your governor should be stable as well as sensitive enough to handle it. Okay, so it's a trade off between stability and the sensitivity. Yeah. Okay. Um, now I think we should understand this isochronism point first. Okay. Let's try to understand the point isochronism. Write down heading isochronism. So when we say a governor is isochronous governor, a governor is said to be isochronous governor with a, if it has range of speed zero, okay? So a governor with a range of speed zero, zero is known as isochronous governor. Okay, is known as isochronous governor. So um, this means, so let's say, a for um, what is the meaning of it? Let's say <coughs> range of speed is zero means. <coughs> okay, let let me just explain you through um, uh, the position of the sleeve and balls. Okay, so you know that. In case of centrifugal governor, um, position of balls, balls, or let's say position of sleeves, position of sleeve will be different for different speeds, right? But if for all the positions of the, for all the positions of the ball uh, um, or the sleeves, you can say if governor is having same equilibrium speed having same speed you can say then that type of governor is called as isochronous governor and we can clearly see that this is not practical okay this is not practical because we know that whenever speed of the spindle increases balls will go away from each other and uh, the position of the ball will change its position of the uh, sleeve will change and ultimately that will affect the fuel supply and fuel supply will change the speed okay so so we cannot say that in reality for all the positions of the ball or for the all the position of the sleeve uh, will have the same speed let's take an example of porter governor uh, if you remember the formula for the porter governor um, what was the formula n was equal to let me just check the formula um, my notes um portal governor formula uh, yeah i think it was n square equal to 895 by h into m plus m divided by m if you remember this was the last formula we have studied in the porter governor so from this i can say h is equal to i can write in general height of the sleeve okay h is like a height you can say okay um uh, let's say h1 is equal to um 
so for let's say it's a constant term 495 mm. or 895 uh, by in general i'll say some constant term c divided by omega square because uh, n is in rpm i am writing in the omega so g some constant term divided by omega 1 square 1 plus small m capital m by small m can i write it like this uh can i also write it h2 is equal to omega 2 square 1 plus capital m by small m correct is it correct or not <clears throat> so yeah this this we know that let's say for different omega we'll have different uh, value of h in general but for isochronous chronos governor if omega 1 equal to omega 2 there should be different h1 and h2 it means for different position of the balls of the sleeve we have same equilibrium position so we know that this is possible only when okay or if omega 1 equal to omega 2 then h1 has to be equal to h2 means we are talking about the same position here okay and uh, neglecting the effect of friction and all you see so basically uh, there is no chance that uh, we will have different positions but we have the uh, same omega okay that's what it is not practical uh, not practical case okay is it clear what is the concept of isochronism um, if if we not practical especially in this uh, porter governor so this formula was for porter governor Um, so now, um, let's see, or this is the condition you can say for the isochronism means if you want Omega same, then your H1 and H2 has to be same. This is the, um, criteria. Now, if I take example of, let's say, uh, Hartnell governor. In Hartnell governor, if you remember this formula, M1 or M R1 omega 1 square A equal to 1 half Mg plus Fs1 times B. I am neglecting the frictional force. So if uh, you, you should remember this formula and corresponding to omega 2, I can write like this. So this is a capital Mg plus fs2 into b okay so from this uh, i can this is a relationship shift for the different omega and if you uh, want a limiting case for isochronism omega 1 should be equal to omega 2 then if you take a division of it mm will get cancelled a will get cancelled half half will get cancelled bb will get cancelled r1 r2 will remain and omega 1 and omega 2 is same so they will also get cancelled so this if if you want a isochronous hartnell governor then this is the limiting case r1 equal r1 by r2 equal to mg plus fs1 divided by mg plus fs2 okay so this is what you should know Uh, uh, what is your doubt, Sean? Uh, why was it introduced? Uh, you're talking about which point? Um, uh, sir, like I was asking, uh, sir, I'm not able to hear you. Yes, yes, you are audible. Uh, sir, like I was asking, why was this concept introduced? Like, uh, like we already knew that, uh, like, it's uh, omega 1 and omega 2. Uh, yeah. When it's equally, we can we only we only have H one and H two. So yeah, this is for the implicate case of R one, right? Yeah, but it can be possible in not on not in this um, order, but in Hartnell 
we can have a situation like um, let's say uh, here it's clear that our solution should be at particular um, uh, for example at particular height and that height should be equal in order to achieve this omega 1 equal to omega 2 but in case of Hartnell governor um, like uh, how we can judge um, because there the spring force can be different okay and uh, if you consider the frictional force also then there ca there can be a situation where uh, you may get omega 1 equal to omega 2 uh, for different value of r okay so here r1 by r2 um, i am not saying here r1 is equal to r2 here it is possible that r1 by r2 if it is equal to uh, mg plus fs1 divided by mg plus fs2 then there is a chance that we'll get omega 1 equal to omega 2 okay why because this is not the straightforward way uh, here we are not just using the centrifugal force but we are also introducing the spring force so isochronism can be possible in the hartnell governor where uh, we have different uh, for a different let's say uh, values of r uh, we will get the um, same omega but in porter governor it's not practical as i said basically it's limiting cases means for if for the same value of omega your h has to be same so it means we are talking about the same uh, uh, same position is it clear now yeah okay i'll give a two minutes break i'll drink water and come okay Uh, I'll proceed to the next slide. <coughs> Another point is effort of governor. Um, so effort of governor, write down the definition first. It's a mean force acting. Mean force acting on the sleeve. On the sleeve to rise or lower it to rise or lower it for a given change of speed okay for a given change of speed mean force acting on the sleeve to rise or lower it for a given change of the speed okay uh, let's try to uh, understand it through some small uh, derivation okay <clears throat> let me just um, get the formulas which we have already studied and then we'll start from it So um, you already know um, for Porter governor okay no I think yeah I think um, 
let's avoid it uh, the derivation for it mm. okay i'll explain the concept only um, mean force acting on the sleeve to rise or lower it from the for a given change of the speed you know that uh, if we have a sleeve let's take a porter governor uh, which with we have a sleeve there okay and um, or a hartnell governor okay and in this case what we are we know that the sleeve is changing from the um, from the equilibrium position let's say it can move in upward direction or downward direction uh, to the maximum and minimum position okay uh, whenever there is a force acting on the fluid uh, this uh, sleeve is changing then um So we can say this loom will move in upward and low, uh, downward direction. So let's say um, force applied on the sleeve is initially at this uh, equilibrium position. Force on the sleeve is zero. Okay. And let's say uh, because of some change in the speed, the sleeve um, force acting on the sleeve is, let's say, is now e okay so the what is the mean value of it zero plus e divided by two which is e by two okay so effort of the governor is always written by e by two why because it's a mean force okay mean force acting on the sleeve that is why we always define it as a e by two not uh, not just f or not just e because it's a mean value and it's changing from e zero because at equilibrium position when speed change is not there um there is no force acting on the governor but now let's say if um, speed is changing because of the load application then sleeve will either move up or down and uh, which will cause load e so the mean load will be zero plus e divided by two in the moment of the sleeve either by rising it or lowering it okay and the effort e by two is given by um, for port for different governors we have different formulas. So for Porter governor, write down the formula e by two is equal to two c by one plus k. In bracket 2mg plus mg times 1 plus k okay uh, this second m is capital this how we can uh, uh, okay not not um, e by 2 is equal to okay this is this 2 is not here okay e by 2 is equal to and if g also you take out you can write it like this cg divided by 1 plus k 2m plus m times 1 plus k okay you already know here what is k and uh, uh, what is c what is k it is tan of theta divided by tan of beta right um what was the value um, when we were studying the um, porter governor it's a tan of beta divided by tan of theta okay and we also know that a b c values in the porter governor um, i'll just go back to show you um, exactly so if you don't remember uh, i'll explain you here now um, yeah k is tan of beta divided by theta beta is this angle theta is this angle and uh, c is what uh, the length okay this distance okay now yeah i'll go to the next slide so for example if k is equal to one k is not always one okay k is equal to one is, is a special situation when beta is equal to theta right so if that is a the case then how the formula will look like 
e by 2 will be equal to cg by 2 into in bracket 2m plus m so 2 2 will get cancelled uh, i can directly write m plus capital m into cg if it is k is equal to 1 okay and if you consider the friction this is without friction no huh? And if with friction, then E by 2 equal to Mg plus capital Mg, small mg plus capital Mg plus frictional force. This is a frictional force into C. Okay. We know this. And um, so this is for Porter governor. Coming towards the VAT governor. Um, okay. VAT governor. For VAT governor, uh, we know the mass of the sleeve is zero. So effort will be E by 2 equal to um, CG into M plus M was there, right? So only CG into small m will be there. So I'll write CMG. Okay. Because in case of VAT governor, we don't have sleeve. So sleeve mass is not there. And uh, also the um, friction force will not be there, okay? For Hartnell governor, for Hartnell governor, um, the formula is E by two equal to C times Mg plus Fs because we have uh, spring force here, which is Fs. Uh, so e by 2 is equal to c times mg plus frictional force okay so these formulas are Im <coughs> important <coughs> but cmg is there cmg is a basic formula for uh, vat governor if you are using a uh, porter governor it's a c times cg times m plus m if it is a hartnell governor it is c times mg plus fs so formulas are more or less similar and the last point, power of governor. Power of the governor is nothing but the uh, work done at the sleeve at a given percentage of speed, or you can say it is a product of effort to the displacement of the sleeve. Product of, or let's say, effort into the sleeve displacement. Okay. Um, effort into sleeve displacement. I'll write down this. Uh, yes. Hello, uh, in case of Hartnell governor, like uh, we have two components of uh, force, right? Uh, like mg mass of the steel plus frictional force plus spring force, and uh, like the mass of the bolts. Like uh, so that uh, like the, is this the equation? Like I thought it would be like mg plus f plus one plus f into b plus mg into c. Like can you go to that Hartnell governor derivation? Uh, okay, so you mean? Um, um... Okay, let me just go back to the Hartnell governor. Mm. Okay, uh, so we have we don't have the mass of the sleeve here. Um, so sorry, we don't have the mass of the ball here because um, um, that we have uh, anyway removed in the calculation. So only we have mass of the sleeve into the consideration. If you remember, okay, um, so. That's why only capital M is coming, uh, not the small m. Yeah. So let me correct this. This is capital M, not small. Thanks. Yeah, make it capital MG.
yeah make it capital mg <clears throat> here we have uh, neglected the effect of um, uh, this balls and um, so that's why that M mg into c1 and c2 small mg into c1 and c2 uh, points we have neglected uh, and uh, the major contribution we understood it only from the frictional force and uh, mass of the uh, sleeve and the spring force Okay, uh, if you neglect the friction, it will be only mass of the uh, sleeve and the frictional uh, and the spring force. So this is M is the mass of sleeve. And this is a spring force. Okay, so uh, and write down this formula also power of the governor is equal to effort into the sleeve displacement. Okay. Um, yeah, this, these are the some small points which you should know apart from the uh, speed calculations which we have studied in this chapter. Okay, so main thing is how N is related to the other parameters. Okay, like how speed is changing, how the height of the governor or um, let's say uh, R and other parameters or other dimensions of the uh, governor which are uh, described by position of the sleeve and the position balls is changing okay so that is what we have studied in this whole chapter uh, not only in the, uh, so mainly in the centrifugal type of governors um, in radial govern uh, in case of sorry inertia governor we also understood that not just centrifugal force but also the inertia force comes into the picture in order to uh, control the fuel supply and uh, apart from this we also understood some small uh, topics uh, or uh, concepts such as stability of the governor, sensitiveness of the governor, hunting of the governor, isochronism and uh, effort and power of the governor. Okay, so these all definitions and uh, their formulation you should know. Um, any doubt till this? Can we proceed towards uh, next point? Okay, so I'll close this PPT um, and uh, I have another PPT with me. Um, okay, um, we are, we are here we'll understand some concept about CAMS. Okay, so it's like more or less this is a bit theoretical topic. Um, uh, I don't expect any uh, numerical questions from this. Uh, if they are there, but um, they, they'll be quite easy. Okay, so this is one of the very small topic um, from your syllabus. So write down heading camps. So we have studied in mechani uh, mechanisms uh, uh, that cam and follower was like a um it's a uh we can say higher pair right it's a higher pair why because uh, generally we have a point contact or a line contact in between um, a cam and follower gen mainly point contact yes okay <coughs> now so and contact is there there is a direct contact in between cam and follower so what does it mean it, it means like the cam is you can say a mechanical member which is used to give a desired motion to the follower by direct contact so the the word direct contact is very important uh, by means of direct contact the desired motion is given to the follower by means of a um, mechanical member uh, that is called as cam. So I'll, this is a small um, animation here, which you can see. So as I mentioned here, is a mechanical member. Cam is a mechanical member. Used to impart 
or used to be provide desired motion motion to follower by direct contact okay um this cam in this animation is rotating cam so th this is called as cam here this is cam this rotating member is cam and uh, this brown um, uh, let's say member is follower okay so cam is rotating uh, the the follower is in direct contact with the cam and uh, in this figure it's uh, <coughs> rotating but cam can be rotating or uh, reciprocating whereas this follower can be also like uh, here it's reciprocating it can be rotating or reciprocating or oscillating also okay so more or less like whatever complicated output motions which we required uh, in case of uh, ic engines or other controlling mechanisms we can make use of this cams and uh, follower in order to achieve it so what you understand from this figure is a cam is like a driving member it's a driving member of this small mechanism and or this linkage and follower is a driven member okay so if you and if you consider it as a small mechanism then in this case um, cam is a driving member and uh, follower is a driven member and uh, there can be a frame so this what is this this is a frame basically right this is a frame maybe i'll use some other pen to uh, show these arrows one two three okay so this is frame frame is like um, it's a guiding unit uh, which is let's say uh, guiding for a follower it can be or it can be uh, supporting stuff. this is also frame okay this is shaft but um, it can be a part of a frame so basically a frame which supports the cam and guides the follower um, so in in this mechanism there can be like uh, here you can see uh, spring is there fine but spring may be there may not be there it, it's not an issue okay the spring we are keeping just to make sure that uh, they will not lose any contact and will get a desired motion. But if you don't put a spring by gravity of uh, action also, this follower will move um, as cam rotates. Okay. So if you neglect the spring here, more or less uh, like you will have cam, follower and a guide ways and uh, support system. Okay. <clears throat> Is it clear till this? Can I move towards next slide? Now, we should understand the different types of cams and different types of followers. Types of cams. Write down heading types of cams. Cams are classified according to the shape. According to shape. According to the follower motion. Or follower movement and what kind of constraint you are putting on the follower. So I'll say manner of constraint of the follower. Okay. Types of camps. Camps are classified according to the shape, follower movement and manner of constraint of the follower. So according to shape first, okay. According to shape, um, I would say, um, uh, let's start with this according to the shape. It's further classified as, let's say, wedge and flat camps. Okay. Second, it is radial or disc camps then third 
तो स्पाइरल कैम ओके सिलेंड्रिकल कैम ओके सिलेंड्रिकल कैम एंड देन वी हैव फिफ्थ वन इज कॉन्जुगेट कैम सेव सिक्स वन इज ग्लोबॉइडल एंड सेवेंथ वन इज स्पेरिकल ओके दीज आर दस different types of cams let's try to understand them one by one first one is wedge and flat cam so you can clearly see here uh so this is cam here okay this is your cam which is shaded here in figure number a and b you can clearly see uh the cam has wedge which is written as w here okay um and uh, here we can see it is translate it is having a translatory motion so as i said previously it can have either rotating it can be rotating or translatory okay so in this case it is having a translatory motion cam has a wedge w and it is having a translatory motion shown in the figure a and b and uh, in this case we have attached um uh, springs okay uh springs are used mainly here to make sure that uh, there is a contact between uh cam and a follower okay because um, there is a chance that uh, you may not get a desired uh this is not a rotating cam okay this is a um let's say translatory cam and in this case there is a chance that let's say if cam is going from right towards right that's fine it will be in contact but if it is coming uh, right to left suddenly let in that case there is a chance that we may not get a 100% touch in between cam and follower so as to maintain it uh, or uh, make sure that we have um, contact between cam and follower we are putting springs here okay it's always good to put the springs um, to uh, avoid any um, um let's say uh uh uncertainty uh, or uncertain behavior or loose contact yes we can say correct okay so this is about the wedge and flat camps um and what about the figure number c here uh, this is also more or less same here we have um um uh guide ways for the follower okay uh here cam is fixed but let's say you are rotating the follower by moving the guide ways okay this is something different but this also you can say as um a wedge on the flat cam because um here though your cam is stationary follower is constrained to slide in between the guide ways and um uh which will have the relative motion um with the follower and cam okay so the these figures are mainly for the um your type number 1 coming towards the second type which is a radial or disc type okay that i think i have already shown to you um or maybe i will um go to the next slide yeah it's is here so right down here radial or disc type okay Th there was one more figure here this also is one of the let's say a wedge or flat cam you can say so in case of uh, instead of using wedge uh, what we are using here is a flat plate with a groove okay so here it was a wedge um here what we are using a plate with a groove and we are fixing our follower in that groove so the groove is there and the follower is held inside that groove uh, so as to and whenever a follower is held inside the groove 
we are always we are getting the positive um, drive in this case you can say okay so this is an example of positive drive what is the what is the meaning of positive drive if you remember let's say in gears also we get positive drive because there is no slipping or anything right we are forcefully let's say uh, moving one gear by means of other gear correct here also in that case like because of direct contact in between the tips of the gear we are forcefully moving one gear by other gear so same thing here follower is held uh, inside these grooves which are made on this plate uh, which is making sure a positive drive in this case this is also an example of a, this is a flat cam example and the, uh, the these three figures are like for the wedge shape okay coming towards the second radial or disc cam i'm showing here figures a and b okay uh, we have already seen the animation of this which is um, uh, radial that is also a radial cam okay so here the follower is move uh, will is moving radially from the center of the rotation of the cam you can say um, you can call it as a radial cam or disc cam it is very simple and compact compared to others okay so uh, the follower movement is up and down which is in the radial direction of the cam in this case also cam is rotating and the follower is moving up and down uh, yes here again we are achieving positive right correct um, sean because uh, the cam and followers are let like a um, forced to um, stay in um, stay together and uh, you cannot basically um, remove them you cannot separate them here you ca i can separate cam and follower easily but in this case you cannot okay yeah the next is a spiral cam i have already shown the figure here spiral cam you can say is um, uh, what they have spiral groove is prepared okay so we have prepared a spiral groove um, on the cam and uh, follower is let's say is in mesh with this grooves okay uh, let me rub this by means of pin gear okay so we have uh, spiral grooves and on scam on cam and uh, it is in mesh with the uh, <coughs> you can say pin gear follower okay so we have spin gear follower so that's why it is in mesh and uh, we'll get a motion out of it but problem with this spiral cam is what will happen at that at, after this end again we have to shift the position of the cam okay or shift the position of the follower okay so cam we cannot move so we have to again bring the um, follower to the starting point okay so that is the only drawback of it so it, it has a limited application um, but yeah so um, as the moment as the groove is in spiral uh, shape we are calling it as a spiral cam or what will happen uh, if um, either you have to reset or you have to reverse the direction of the cam so basically cam will first rotate in this direction then again uh, let's say change the direction in order to uh, move the follower so it has a little bit limited application so when whenever you have to do some let's say repeated motion uh, a halfway repeated motion okay um, in those cases in those application this can be um, useful okay so this was the second type and third type the fourth type as i mentioned cylindrical cam
here we have example of cylindrical camp. Both this figure A and B are shown are for the cylindrical camps. So we have a cylinder circumference. Okay, in first case, what we have is uh, on the circumference of cylinder itself, we have made a groove. Okay, and the follower is held inside that groove. Okay, uh, and we are getting a constrained positive oscillation of the follower. Here, the follower is like oscillating a little bit, right? You will say that it is oscillating. It is a constraint. Constraint means positive uh, oscillating motion of the follower you can achieve here by making the grooves on the periphery of the cylinder. What about the second figure, figure number B? Um, this is again the spring loaded, but here we have the one end of the cylinder. We are, let's say, um, are made in the form of a cam. Okay. So basically what will happen, this follower will do a translatory motion as cam rotate, rotates. Um, yeah. Uh, Yes, yes, Sean. Follower is touching the cross section of the cylinder here. So, and cross section is like uh, we have made um, uh, the shape. It's not plain shape. We have made a different shape so that the follower will move uh, towards right and left. Okay. So, this is how we can um, uh, understand cylindrical cams. We can also call them as drum cams. Okay, drum cams or barrel cams, all are same words. Next one is a conjugate cam. If the conjugate cam, conjugate means in pair, right? Conjugate pair we use terminology in mass. Conjugate means uh, like double disc. Whenever you have, let's say, uh, cam disc number one and cam disc number two, and we have two followers touching them conjugate cam is a double disc cam basically and uh, the two discs are keyed together and they are in touch with the two followers as shown in this figure and uh, because of this again they will end up with a positive constraint okay um here the good advantage of this conjugate cam is like um, it it will have a lower wear um, as we have this, uh, let's say, a roller follower. Follower is in the form of a roller. roller. We have low wear, low noise, and um, better control of follower at a, a high speed. Okay, so these are some advantages of this um, um, this mechanism. Okay, so you can write here. Um, low wear, low noise, and better control of follower. Whenever it's required, we can go for the conjugate cam. Next one is a globoidal. Globoidal cam. In case of globoidal cam, uh, we can clearly see there are two surfaces, either convex or con concave. Okay, so if we have, let's say, cylindrical cam, but like more or less the same as cylindrical cam, but uh, the surfaces are either concave or convex, and uh, the <coughs> so you can clearly see this is more or less similar to it, but our surfaces are concave or convex in this case, and uh, our follower is oscillating as it is um, fixed in the um, grooves which are made on the circumference of the um, these convex and concave surfaces okay those in those cases we call it as a globoidal cam okay it's more or less same as cylindrical cam which we have studied before but um, here the shape is either convex or concave and the last one is spherical cam We can clearly see here our cam is spherical and uh, <clears throat> the follower is oscillating 
okay here it's oscillating like this our um, up and down because of the motion of the cam okay it is also having a limited use so depending on the cam uh, type of the cam we have these some basic types okay these are the basic types of cams and this is how we can expect the cam follower mechanism now if i um, go to the let's say second classification of the cam depending on according to the follower movement so this was according to the shape of the cam right now according to the follower movement uh, these are the types according to the follower movement so according to this classification we have uh, these are the types these are the main three types we have first the type is rrr second type is drrr drrd and third type is dr drd okay let's try to understand them so <clears throat> if you let's say st uh, study this figure simple figure okay um, or let's understand this animation what we are seeing follower is rising and then lowering okay it's coming down okay it's rising and returning rising and returning right so it's not let's say rising staying for some time and returning the graph is not like this the graph is like it is rising and then returning okay or more or less like this let me uh, show you through these figures so if the follower motion is like um, or follower movement is in the form of rise and return okay rise return and then again rise okay so basically alternate rise and return with a no period of dwell then you can say it is as rrr um kind of arrangement okay what is dwell here can anyone tell me what is dwell dwell means follower is not moving but cam is moving so for this cam angle your follower location position is same then basically you can call it as a dwell so um, in this animation if uh, or let's say rather than this animation if i let's say in this case if i make a wedge shape of this like this for example here it is horizontal rather than the slope i keep it as horizontal what will happen because of this follower will not move right it will just stay at the same location uh in this area and that is making it dwell okay similarly in this case if i make a flat here okay somewhere here if i make a flat um uh curve or um uh, or maybe easier example would be yeah here if i make take a horizontal make it horizontal like this horizontal groove what will happen um in this case we will get the uh, in this uh case we will not expect any um let's say movement of a follower right so there can be a situation like we can make uh, we make that cam is moving but follower is not moving okay it is possible as i said um yeah follower will remain in the same height so those uh, cases you can call it as a dwell cases okay dwell means follower is in motion but sorry cam is in motion but um, there is a zero displacement of the follower okay so if if dwell is zero it is a rrr kind of arrangement so basically rise return and rise okay rrr stands for rise rise return and then again rise okay is it clear the first type second type drrd dwell so it's here dwell rise return 
and then again dwell. Okay. So here we have dwell at the end of the rise and return on both the ends of the rise and return. Then we call it as a DRRD kind of uh, arrangement. Okay. Or DRRD cam. And if we have a dwell, then rise, then dwell, then return, then dwell. So alternate dwell and rise, then dwell and return, then dwell and rise, so on. Then we can call it as a DRDRD kind of arrangement. Okay. So we can have any kind of possible arrangement. Like we can also have this as shown in figure number D. We can have dwell, then rise, then dwell, and then sudden fall. Okay. Depending on how you make shape of your cam, um, that's all. Okay, depending on how what is how what is the shape of the cam. Um, so basically, if if you make a shape of the cam like this itself, okay, and the follower is let's say like this. Follower is in touch. Okay, and this is a translatory motion. Um, and you made sure it is connected through spring. So basically, this is the dwell portion. Then it's a rise portion. Okay. Mm. And then dwell portion and then sudden fall. So this arrangement is more or less same. Okay. So you can make any kind of, uh, let's say, possible arrangements by changing the shape of the cam. And um, that is achieved uh, by changing the shape of the cam. And that's why we have these different types. And main types are like this RRR, rise, return, rise, DRRD, which is dwell rise return and dwell and dr dr d means dwell rise dwell return dwell okay i hope it's clear till this can i proceed to the next slide yeah uh, according to the and then third classification is according to the constraint of follower Constraint of the follower. First one is preloaded spring cam. Okay, so in this figure, you can clearly see um, <coughs> a preloaded compression spring we have used to keep in uh, contact uh, between the cam and follower to make sure there is no uncertain behavior. Okay, so this is a preloaded spring cam, which we have already studied uh, in in previous uh, figures. Then next one is a positive drive cam. This also we have studied indirectly. So here we can um, we can make sure a constant touch between cam and follower by maintaining a ro roller for rover in between, a, let's say, a grooves. Okay, so if there is a fixed contact in between cam and follower, um, uh, the drive which we'll get is a positive drive cam. Okay. So whenever we get a constrained motion, constrained drive or positive drive, you can say that can be achieved by using this kind of uh, arrangement. And the third one is gravity cam. Same as the preloaded, uh, same as this first figure, but spring we have removed we don't have spring here okay so by the action of the gravity the motion of the follower with respect to the cam will happen but here we there is a chance of uncertain behavior okay if you don't put let's say the spring uh, because of that we can expect some uncertain behavior in the gravity cam okay here we are using only gravity force to Make sure the contact between the cam and follower. Okay, and that is the only reason for uncertain behavior. If you use a spring, then we can be a little more sure about it. Is it clear till this? And in case of positive drive, we are hundred percent sure. So this is like a, how we are constraining <coughs> the follower motion or the follower with respect to the cam. If we constrain it completely, then we will get a positive drive. If we constrain it by using spring, it's a preloaded spring cam. If we use just the gravity force, we call it as a gravity cam. 
so these are all the different types of camps you should know um, next one is type of followers okay this is quite small topic types of followers okay followers are again classified according to the shape then um, according to the uh, moment moment and uh, according to the location of line of moment okay according to the shape the first one is the knife edge name itself indicate if we have knife edge here look at this if we have uh, the edge of the follower is in is a sharp we call it as um, knife edge we'll have a point contact in this case so it's a knife edge follower then let's say if we have a roller follower if uh, name itself indicates if um, cylindrical roller is we are using to have a contact in between cam and a follower then we call it as a roller follower okay it's like a widely used um, cam follower um, and has cylindrical roller which is free to rotate about the pin joint which is shown in the in this figure okay um, so the, the problem with this is like uh, at a higher speed there can be a chances of sliding in between the roller and the um, cam okay so at lower speed it's good but at a higher speed there can be a problem so this is the roller follower third one is mushroom follower mushroom follower okay we also have figures for it in case of mushroom follower you can either have a flat face mushroom follower or a spherical face mushroom follower why what is the difference between them if we keep a flat face mushroom follower there is a chance that uh, in between this face of the follower and the cam uh, we have a significant uh, contact and uh, can have high surface stresses and wear okay um, and that can be avoided by using this spherical face follower okay but you can clearly see uh, the shape of the follower is in the form of mushroom that's why we are calling it as a mushroom follower okay now um, coming towards the another type of the follower which is depending on the moment either we can have reciprocating a reciprocating follower or oscillating follower Okay, follower will either oscillate or reciprocate so this is a reciprocating a reciprocating follower okay we can clearly see it will have a reciprocating motion up and down and here it will it is having a oscillation so either the follower will oscillate in this range okay so this is an oscillating follower okay name itself indicate if follower is rotating it's a sorry follower is reciprocating is a reciprocating follower if it is oscillating we call it as oscillating follower that's all and the third type is uh, location of line of moment here either we have a radial follower or offset follower okay look at this figure so here the axis of the moment of the follower and the axis of the rotation of the cam is on the same line okay look at this i'll i'll use the red pen okay so this axis is passing through this center here also this axis is passing through center so these are the good example of radial followers okay so a follower is known to be a radial follower if the line of moment of the follower passes through the center of rotation of the cam 
and if there is a little offset in between them okay so this is the one line is for the center of rotation of this cam other is for the um, let's say axis of the uh, oscillation of the follower so there is offset in between them and we can call it as a offset follower okay i hope it's clear till this <clears throat> so this is all about the types of uh, cams and followers uh, we'll study some definitions okay uh, we have some time so i think we can proceed for those definitions um write down heading definitions about this first definition is base circle we have already studied similar thing in gears right okay so you should be able to compare it base circle base circle shown in this figure so this is the circle i have used blue pen to show you okay so it is a smallest circle uh smallest circle tangent tangent to the cam profile okay so here we it is tangent to the cam profile contour or cam profile you can say okay drawn from the center of rotation of the cam so this is the center of rotation of the cam okay. drawn from let's call it as a point number c drawn from c i will say <clears throat> now this is its base circle second definition is trace point this is very important okay trace point it is here okay in the figure you can clearly see trace point what is this trace point trace point is a reference point it's a reference point on the follower okay um trace point which is uh, which is called as a reference point on the follower to trace the cam profile okay so it is tracing the cam profile basically it is also tracing the cam profile okay uh if you use uh let's say um um point what was that knife edge follower knife edge follower so how the knife edge follower will look like like this it will look like so in that case your this this will be your trace point okay this will be your trace point trace point itself lie on the cam profile but uh, in case of okay let me just show here trace point but in case of um, uh, uh, roller follower as shown in this figure the trace point is like um, it is following the cam profile but at a certain distance from it like this okay because here the trace point is a center of that roller okay it is not the point of the contact okay of this cam profile it is center of the roller okay so that is a reference you should know it's a reference point that's why it is called as a reference point reference point on the follower so knife edge follower it is uh, edge of the follower itself and for uh, some roller follower it is center of roller okay i hope um you understood here okay you might have drawn this in engineering um that's engineering drawing topic in in this exam you are not expected to draw or anything but you should be aware of it okay next one is a pitch circle third one is pitch circle um pitch circle is like a curve drawn by trace point so um sorry pitch curve first but pitch curve pitch curve is a curve traced by a trace point pitch curve is traced by pitch point 
then pressure angle. Okay, so here this is pressure angle you can see. It is the angle between um, or basically it's uh, representing the steepness of the cam profile. Steepness of cam profile. So basically here the profile is more steep compared to here. Okay, so how much so basically pressure angle will vary from one location to the other. Okay, it is the angle between normal to the pitch curve. So this is a normal to the pitch curve. Okay. Uh, let me use this. Normal to pitch curve. And this is the follower axis. Okay, so the angle between follower axis and normal to the pitch curve is called as a pressure angle. Okay, clear till this pitch point. Pitch point is this point. Okay, uh, next is pitch point. Okay, I'll repeat uh, definition, Sean. Uh, pressure angle definition. Pressure angle basically represents the steepness of the uh, cam profile. Pressure angle represent the steepness of the cam profile and it is the angle between it is the angle between normal to the pitch curve normal to the pitch curve and the follower axis okay um, okay follower axis are the uh, direction of the follower of motion you can say it's the same thing basically Follower axis also, it's okay. So, this is the pressure angle. Clear? Yeah, I'll rub this to avoid the uh... okay, so that you can clearly see the figure. Yeah, pitch point. Next definition is pitch point. Pitch point is a point on the pitch curve at which the pressure angle is maximum. Okay, point on. Pitch curve at which maximum pressure angle will be there. Okay, because as I said, steepness of the cam profile is varying from one location to other. But so basically, pressure angle is varying. That means steepness varying means pressure angle is varying. So pressure angle will vary from some maximum value to the minimum value. So the point at which Okay, point on the pitch curve at which the pressure angle is maximum that is called as a pitch point and a circle drawn from that point is called as a pitch circle. Okay, so this is the pitch circle drawn from the center of the cam C. Okay, center of rotation of the cam C and passing through the pitch point. So the next definition six is a pitch circle circle passing through the pitch point and uh, concentric with the base circle is called as a pitch circle. And the last definition is prime circle. Okay, I'll repeat the definition of pitch circle. Um, sixth one was pitch circle. Pitch circle is a circle passing through the pitch point and concentric with the base circle. Okay. And uh, prime circle is the smallest circle drawn tangent to the pitch curve. Okay. Um, prime circle is this. Okay. So, and this is the pitch curve. I'll use, uh, I'm using the blue pen to uh, draw the pitch curve here. You can clearly see smallest uh, circle that can be um, drawn tangent to the pitch curve is called as prime circle.
okay so these are the definitions you should know so generally base circle is smaller than prime circle and then we have a pitch circle yeah uh, and if we have a knife edge follower knife edge follower means we have our pitch point sorry our trace point itself will be uh, your cam profile okay so in that case your base circle and um, prime circle will be same okay yes correct Sean. so this is what basic things you should know from the um, from the definitions point of view okay uh, uh, another point I would like to um, give with let's say um, yeah derivatives of follower motion so write down heading derivatives of follower motion okay uh, follower motion is like you know cam is moving rotating follower is also moving okay uh, let's say assume the cam is now i will assume the rotary cam now uh, for simplicity uh, cam is rotating and follower is uh, basically reciprocating up and down <clears throat> so we have a displacement of follower for different values of the theta okay theta is cam angle and s is a follower displacement okay so follower displacement is a function of a cam angle do you agree as um, cam angle changes follower displacement will also change so if you take a derivative of it, what quantities we are ending up with is we have to understand in this topic. So the derivatives can either be taken with respect to the theta or with respect to the time. So with respect to time, we call it as a physical derivatives and with respect to the theta, we call it as a kinematic derivatives. So first I'll write kinematic derivatives. The second one is a physical derivatives. Okay. Uh, physical derivatives like s dot is equal to ds by dt. Okay. Um, and kinematic derivative would be um, like ds by d theta. First, a derivative s dot theta can be written as ds by d theta. Okay, s double dot of theta can be written as um, d square s by d theta square. Okay, uh, s dot t here we are taking with respect to t. Yeah, remember with respect to theta here, with respect to t here. So ds by dt is ds by d theta and d theta by d t because your theta is changing with respect to t okay so here s is function of theta and theta is function of t that is because cam angle will change with respect to time right so that's why we are we have these things here so it is omega this is your omega ds by dt okay second derivative will be d 2s by dt square which is Directly, I'll write here. Sorry, this is ds by d theta. Correct. Thanks, Sean, uh, for correcting it. So it is omega square time d2s by d theta square. And let's say a triple derivative will look like as d3s by dt, dt cube, sorry, which is equal to omega cube d cube s by d theta cube. Can you tell me what is this first thing? This is basically the velocity. Correct. This is nothing but the velocity. ds by dt is first derivative with respect to um, time represents the velocity. This is the velocity with of the um, follower. What about this? This is the acceleration of the follower. And what is third deriv derivative? Can anyone tell me? It is jerk. Okay. 
Oh, it is jerk. For a smooth moment, what is our expectation? We want like the jerk should not be there, right? Okay, so even a high value of jerk is undesirable, we can say, in case of high speed cams. Um, yeah, and um, the second derivative here represents the acceleration. Um, more the acceleration, we can expect more inertia force. And um, third derivative is jerk, as I said, and uh, which represents the smooth moment of the follower. Higher the jerk, higher the value of the third derivative means higher the value of jerk, which means high, uh, which is not undesirable, which is not desirable for the high speed cams, we can say. I hope you understood these definitions here, uh, velocity, acceleration, and jerk. Coming towards the kinematic derivatives, um, we are taking derivatives with respect to the theta. ds by d theta represent the steepness of the displacement curve. Okay. It will represent the steepness of the displacement curve at each point of the cam angle. So how steep is the, um, let's say, um, your curve with respect to theta. So maybe I'll um, go back to the slides which we have studied before. So you can clearly see here it's like more steep. Here it is less steep. So for a different cam angle, we have follower displacement. But let's see here steepness is different. Here slope is different. So basically it is giving us the slope, correct? Here we don't have any steepness. Here we have higher steepness. Here we have lower steepness. Do you agree? So this is what it's like a taking a derivative of y with respect to x. This is y and this is x. Differentiating y with respect to x means slope of the uh, curve. Okay, so that is what we can mm, get here. So it's a steepness of the displacement curve. I'll write down. It represents the slope or the steepness of the displacement curve at each point or at each position of the cam angle. Okay, so if we have a higher value of this derivative means our curve is more steep and more falls are there. Okay, so there is a chance that if this value is high, the motion will not be that smooth. Okay, the motion of the follower will not be that smooth. Second derivative here uh, is d2s by ds square is related to the radius of curvature of the cam at a different point. Radius of curvature of cam at a different points along the along its profile. And it is an inverse proportion. So it's in basically in an inverse proportion. Okay, so basically what does it mean? If this value is higher, d2s by d theta is higher, it means radius of curvature is lower. Okay, at that uh, location of the cam, radius of curvature is lower, that's all. So we know like cams are not circular, cams are like this, correct? And uh, here we have smaller radius of curvature, here we have a larger radius of curvature and all, correct? So basically, um, if the second value of the second second derivative of this s is higher means we have um, lower uh, as i said inverse proportion it means we have a lower radius of curvature okay so that is what we can understand from these derivatives why i am explaining in this because uh, it is if depending on the cam profile we can judge how our displacement profile how our uh, velocity and acceleration profile will look like. Okay, so I'll explain it to you through these figures now. So this is the motion of the follower, same topic. And we will assume here simple harmonic motion, for example. Okay, so we are assuming a simple harmonic motion, uh, which is more popular motion and uh, easy to lay, lay out. So, um, we have 
some diff points here which you should know s is follower displacement h is the maximum follower displacement so this is h okay this is the maximum follower displacement v is the velocity of the follower f is acceleration of the follower theta is the cam angle okay so this is this axis is theta and uh, phi is uh, cam rotation angle for the maximum follower displacement so the entire value is phi so theta is varying from 0 to phi you can say and beta is a angle on harmonic circle so it is shown here okay so this is beta so basically <coughs> you have a cam and a follower okay and uh, this is how it is um, this motion is replicated here okay so i hope uh, you are getting this how this curve is drawn so what you will do is you will take a um, semicircle okay um, for the value of h you know okay and then you will dis divide that at uh, equal angles okay so for example one two three four five six you made six um, equal parts so for different values of theta these vertical lines are there you are drawing and uh, you are also joining these all points and corresponding lines wherever are touching one two three four and five and six you will create this graph i'll repeat divide the displacement interval into equal divisions okay and divide this semicircle into the equal decision and project the lines wherever they are intersecting each line draw the curve passing through it so that's how this curve is drawn okay so this is how it is drawn you might have drawn it in uh, during university exams or something um, or practicals but this is how um, if you have not then uh, this is how it is drawn okay so at any instant if you are supposed to calculate the displacement how you will calculate that is given by the formula h by 2 times 1 minus cos of beta okay this displacement is given by h by 2 times 1 minus cos of beta okay <clears throat> so if you try to differentiate it or if you try to simplify it how it will look like so basically here beta if you beta is like we don't know we have to translate into theta then only we'll get idea about it so beta is written as pi times theta divided by phi okay um, the relationship between beta and theta is this so because we can say beta by pi is equal to theta by phi okay for small beta angle the largest value is pi for small theta angle largest value is phi so from this we can also get it so if you put it in this into this uh, formula h by 2 into 1 minus cos of pi theta by phi you will get okay this is your s and um, later on um, you can differentiate it okay <clears throat> this expression is valid for uh, beta more than 90 degree in case beta or this beat cos of um, cos of beta or cos of phi theta by by phi becomes negative yes will let's say again um, turns to be positive um, more than h by 2 okay so basically try to understand this if this value is less than 1 ultimately you will, you will get a positive s okay um, if this value is more than 1 you will get a um, you will get a negative number okay uh, it means It, it it means it's it's like a 
um, basically less than this h by 2 that's all okay so as you increase the theta what you can say is um, your uh, uh, cost values will vary from uh, 1 to minus 1 and accordingly your s will change from negative to positive okay but ultimately we should understand what is s s is like a displacement of follower if it is going up it is positive if you are considering if it is coming down it's negative but both are like motions itself like okay follower motion so in one direction we are assuming it as positive another direction is a negative that's all so now um and uh, theta is what theta is angular displacement and we know angular velocity is angular displacement divided by t so for a small change we are we can say it like this and then theta i can say as omega times t so this expression will further written as h by 2 times 1 minus cos of pi omega t by phi so this relationship is in between now s and t and now we can calculate velocity and displacement because we want s to be a function of theta right but theta is also a function of t so when you put the value of theta in terms of t then only you will get you will differentiate s with respect to t okay so that is the main intention of substituting this here so velocity here is ds by dt and uh, it can be written as um, h by 2 times pi omega by phi differentiation of 1 is 0 differentiation of cos theta is minus sin theta so minus minus will become plus so sin of pi omega t by phi and omega this i have already taken out okay so this is the formula for the velocity when we'll get the maximum value of the velocity when sin of this angle is 1 okay uh, so basically h max is h by 2 pi omega phi is your maximum value of the velocity <clears throat> and you will achieve it when you have this value is equal to 1 uh, 90 degree so it will at um, so this is your theta basically at uh, theta is equal to phi by 2 that's all clear yeah and uh, this is about the velocity second derivative of it will be the acceleration yeah uh, acceleration denoted by f which is dv by dt uh, so it is h by 2 again pi omega phi whole square because differentiation of sine theta is cos theta and pi omega phi term will again come cos of pi omega t by phi okay so this term has came again uh, and you'll get maximum value of the acceleration when you will get just a minute Okay, the maximum value of f you will get as um, h by 2 pi omega by phi whole square can you tell me what what value of theta you will get that yes that theta is equal to 0 correct so now the same thing I am replicating in the um, uh, uh, in this diagram so if you see this displacement diagram here okay look at the displacement diagram how it is varying same thing we are drawing here okay displacement diagram till this okay after that i'm making a dwell and um, so basically phi a here represents the angle of ascent okay Phi D represents angle of descent, and uh, this delta one here, and here also we have delta two. 
represents angle of dwells. Okay, so look at this figure. Um, from this figure, we can clearly see that um, um, we already said a displacement diagram, but let's say acceleration, acceleration from zero to maximum at the beginning, it is suddenly happening. Um, then, um, and uh, from the, let's say maximum to zero at the end also we can clearly see here, okay? So in this figure, what we can see is there is abrupt change in the acceleration from zero to the maximum value at the beginning of the follower motion. And also from the maximum to the zero at the end of the follower motion, okay? Um, similar, uh, Abruption we can see at the start and uh, at the end of the return motion. So this is, let's say, uh, upward motion of the follower, and this is, let's say, a return motion of the follower. So at the beginning and the end of the start, basically at the starting and the end, we have sudden change in the acceleration, okay? That we can see, okay? Um, yeah, that's all more or less. Um, jerk is also like varying. Uh, there is no sudden jerk here, uh, but we we do have sudden acceleration here um, because um, uh, our follower is let's say here and cam is here. It will reach the maximum value and then if um, then it has to suddenly accelerate to come down. So these are that's why the, you have this sudden acceleration and. Um, deceleration at starting and end points of the upward and downward motion of the follower. Is it clear? So basically, like uh, this is a simple harmonic motion. You can have either a constant acceleration motion um, as well, okay, or um, um, constant acceleration or deceleration or constant velocity motions. Uh, the name itself indicate the meaning Constant acceleration means in, in the constant acceleration graph, you will see some, uh, at some point you have the acceleration values as constant, okay? Maybe like this, okay? Dwell, sorry. Hmm. Maybe I'll rub this and I'll use a red pen to draw, okay? So like this, a constant acceleration may look, okay? Um, for example, like this, okay. This is a constant acceleration case. Constant velocity case can also be there in the velocity diagram. This is varying velocity. You will have a constant velocity, sudden increase, then a constant velocity, okay? So depending, so you can have different cam profiles uh, to achieve this constant acceleration uh, and constant velocity motion of the followers. And the one which we have studied in detail was the simple harmonic motion. But as I have already shown you how the motion of the constant velocity and constant acceleration will look like. Any doubt till this? Okay. Um, so just for your understanding, hmm. Constant acceleration. We are at the end of the session, but let's complete this small point and it will be more clear. S is equal to UT plus half of FT square, you know. So basically initial velocity is zero, so you can neglect this part. Half of FT square is your displacement because these relations, you know, V is equal to U plus AT. Uh, v square is equal to U square minus two AS or let's say plus two AS and uh, S is equal to UT plus half of AT square. All these formulas you can use only in case of constant acceleration, right? In mechanics, you might have studied this. Uh, this is what you will use in case of constant acceleration only. So that is the reason I am using this formula here and um, neglecting this part because in initial velocity will be zero. So the constant acceleration F can be given by two S by T square, and then you can, let's say, uh, calculate the velocity and um, 
displacement from this okay for the constant velocity i'm just giving you the hint so um it will be more clear to you we know that uh displacement is in this case in this case the constant velocity means the curve will look like this right um speed versus time so this is your displacement and this is theta okay so this is kind of constant velocity so here s is and this is your h s can be written as h theta by phi and we know theta is equal to omega t so it can be written as h omega t by phi so this is your relationship and you can then differentiate it to get the velocity okay which is h omega phi and we can clearly see this is a constant term so that's why we call calling it as a constant velocity curve and acceleration if you calculate in this case dv by dt will be zero because it's a constant velocity means acceleration will be zero so acceleration diagram will be a straight line in this case we don't have any acceleration jerk will be zero in this case okay so you don't have to worry about it it's a more simple uh, case acceleration is zero jerk is zero and velocity is constant and displacement diagram i have already drawn okay so how this figure will look like uh, maybe i'll draw it here um, so displacement curve will look something like this then dwell and then like this for example then corresponding velocity will be like this then dwell then like this okay this is the velocity diagram acceleration diagram and jerk diagram displacement velocity acceleration and jerk okay so i hope uh, you understood the main relationship between um, uh, how the derivatives are uh, used to calculate the velocity and acceleration um, and uh, we can have different follower motion depending on how cam profile we are making either we can have a simple harmonic motion constant acceleration deceleration or the uh, constant velocity okay is it clear till this any doubt okay sorry for extending this session for uh, 10 12 minutes more um uh, but i thought to extend it because uh, it will be good if we um, study this point in continuation because we have just studied the derivatives and um, the implementation of these derivatives is to understand uh, through this simple harmonic motion constant um, velocity and constant acceleration motion okay so uh, thank you all for uh, joining this class and um, in the next class we'll start the new topic um, uh, either we'll start the balancing and or the uh, dynamic um, dynamic analysis of the linkages okay so we have two classes we have two chapters left i'm expecting that by next week we can we can um, complete the theoretical and um, conceptual part and uh, after that week we will start the problem solving sessions okay so with that thank you all for joining this class and let's meet again tomorrow thank you bye you are currently the only person in